I love the way the First Gen Lounge makes me feel. Because it creates a space where I belong, where we're able to create community. The fact that it's a community. It's a safe place. It also gives me a place to understand different perspectives. The stories of these individuals prescribe transformational perspective. I receive encouragement, enlightenment, empowerment. And also serve as a catalyst to just keep going. Where we're able to be our true selves. I'm allowed to be an unapologetic first gen. And above all else, tell our story. And every episode is unique. I love it. I'm your host, Dr. Eve, and I'd like to welcome you to the First Gen Lounge. Okay, so welcome, 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 family. Always so glad to have you in this space. So excited to have a guest with us today, Kia Edwards, who is a champion, (laughs) literally a champion, but she is one of my sorors who I've had the absolute pleasure of connecting with over the past year and a half or so, maybe even that, probably a little bit longer. We actually met on Clubhouse and she has been nothing but a joy to know. And I'm excited about continuing to partner with her in a number of ways to just do things to continue to serve. And of course, because she is on the show, she is a first generation college graduate, an entrepreneur. Um, She's out on the West side. I'm gonna let her tell you a bit more about herself. Um, So I'm gonna be quiet now. Say, hey, Kia. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. I am Kia. Thank you for that amazing introduction. I I appreciate being here. You're welcome. I am so, so glad to have you here and excited about the conversation that we are going to be having today. Um, I said I just really like to jump into it. So please, if you will, tell us who you are and where you're from and what you do and all that good stuff. Well, I am an entrepreneur. I am a humanitarian, social activist. I am a mother of two little boys, age six and three. I am a wife. I am learning to uh, practice emotional intelligence. Um, I am a survivor. And as you mentioned, uh, first generation first generation in my in my immediate family college graduate so that means I'm also first generation corporate America employee also first generation um which which is significant because that you know being a first generation college student within your household and then trying to get into the workforce that that makes your experience in navigating your career unique as well so um I'm all of those things and of course with being a mom that means You know, I am a chauffeur, I am a mediator, I'm a counselor, I am seeking to build character into my son. So I'm wearing all those hats at the same time. Um, What I do, so I am an instructional designer, which basically means I use authoring tools like Adobe Captivate or Rise 360 or Articulate to create virtual learning packages while I am an experienced in-person adult education practitioner um, and I've also done K through 16 as well I really target my business on answering the virtual online demand especially post-pandemic creating virtual packages and converting in-person curriculum into um, e-learnings many hats many many hats that you wear So a lot of things are on my mind right now. And even thinking about the fact that you were able to successfully go to school, get your degree and even enter into the corporate space. To some, they will probably say that you had it made, um, but you left. Why did you leave? Like what, you know, led you to even want to pursue entrepreneurship? That's a good question. So most people would probably run during the pandemic from entrepreneurship, but I actually ran towards the pandemic, you know, as an educator. It's been difficult for me to try to figure out where I can bring in an extra source of income. Like, wait a minute, do I need to go back to school to be a real estate investor? Do I need to get a broker license? What is it that I can do as a side hustle as an educator? And that's really not one of those degrees. I have a master's in education with a concentration in management and my bachelor's is in communication. And I'm going to plug my HBCU Clark Atlanta University. But... With both of those degrees, communications and education, it's really hard to say, okay, what kind of entrepreneur can I be? But you're wanting to create generational wealth. I didn't want my sons to 
try to figure out how they were going to pay for college or what they could possibly do once they got out of college. I wanted to create an opportunity for them. And during the pandemic, I watched my my oldest son, who at the time was four years old, and he was in a pre-K program for autistic children. And all of his teachers, including his speech therapist and also his occupational therapist in the clinical space, struggled with giving him services based on just all of his needs, you know, and I just feel like the special needs sector was failed during the pandemic because while parents still struggle with trying to do virtual learning, imagine students or learners who did not speak English or were being raised by second by, by a caretaker or caregiver where English was their second language. And so they didn't understand how to even log on to Zoom or some of those virtual classrooms online, which in our terminology, we call those learning management system platforms. And so while I saw his teachers take a month to get him into any type of curriculum virtually, um, God bless them, um, his speech therapist struggled the same with having the access and the know-how. Like they are, co- they are subject matter experts of their field, but they just were not versed in virtual learning platforms. And then again, noticing his occupational therapist and his behavioral therapist, all of those services in four different sectors came to a complete stop because of the pandemic. And here I am, someone that has trained thousands and thousands of learners on different platforms. And from a virtual space, I said, you know what, this is now my opportunity to fix this problem. Even in addition to watching my son's support system struggle, as an employee, as a staff development specialist for the county here, we were all kind of sent home in the pandemic without a plan on how to onboard staff, how to upskill staff, how to reskill them on new opportunities. And so to me, this was an opportunity for me to use my subject matter expertise, which is instructional design, in a way to help a lot of this um, during pandemic, social distance learning um, chaos that was happening on the staff development side and on the K through 16 side. I really, really love that you said that you ran to it. Like you saw an opportunity and you ran to it because some people are afraid of their gifts. And some people will look at an opportunity and say, well, I'm not ready yet, or I don't think that I should move forward in this direction. But for you, you did. Um, But even considering that you did, what I would be curious to know at this moment is, um, was entrepreneur something, entrepreneurship rather, something that was ever a part of the plan, maybe even a thought? And to this date, what has been the most challenging part of it for you? Well, I think, you know, the ancestors have always tapped on my shoulder that, you know, Kia, you want to have your own, you want to be your own boss, you want to make a difference, you want to use your influence. But where does that actually work? You know, where can you actually make that happen? And it not just be, okay, well, I just want an extra stream of income, so let me do real estate. Like, what is a side hustle that's complementary to things that I'm passionate about and that I'm already doing? And honestly, I I could not see any of this through until the pandemic. It was the pandemic that lit the fire, actually, for me. I always knew generational wealth was important. I didn't personally know where my gifts resided in that desire. Um, And so I'm just kind of, of course, I'm not glad the pandemic happened, but I'm glad I had the discernment to see, you know what, I, I can still do something that I'm passionate about and it not feel like work because it doesn't. I am more than just an instructional designer. I use my my skills and my passion into really understanding the learning style and the learning, you know, I don't want to say deficits, but um, getting an understanding and doing analysis of the learner who is going to experience my curriculum and actually creating my concepts and my scenarios and my lessons to make sure that learner is being fed in a way that there's retention in that place. Initially, the first challenging part of being an entrepreneur was being at home with two children in a virtual space. I mean, that that was that was not easy. Um, and I would say secondly, and I think all 
parents kind of struggled with that virtual learning and working from home and everyone being at home. Um, that that was a challenge. But more than that, because we've kind of gotten through some of that um, piece, is trying to navigate working a full time job and kicking off and launching a new LLC. I'm still navigating, you know, how how that works and um, making sure that I am gradually transitioning into entrepreneurship solely 100 percent in a place that doesn't cause there to be a lifestyle change that my household can't afford. So I'm still talking to mentors. I'm still in the midst of figuring out when you kind of cut off completely from still working, you know, with other people separately, nine to five work and entrepreneurship. Mm, I appreciate you for acknowledging those things. And, you know, you said the ancestors have always been speaking. (laughs) So I definitely felt you on that as well. And that was a really great segue um, to the next question that I have for you. So apart from the challenges you've had and beyond the mentors, like you said, that you've been able to reach out to, what are some of the other things that have enabled you to be successful um, thus far as an entrepreneur? And then what do you even count as success? Because I think so often people pursue entrepreneurship and they think money, money, money. But what are some of those other things outside of money? Because, you know, people don't just make money off the bat. Um, not everybody. Let me just say it that way. Um, and I just think that's an interesting thing to navigate or at least an expectation um, for folks to think about as they're probably making their transition into entrepreneurship as well. Well, one of the things that has really kept me whole is I have become a board member for an organization locally here in San Diego called Black Entrepreneurs, Leaders and Learners. And it's just allowed me to just be in the room, take in the air, feed off their energy, especially when you're a solo entrepreneur and there's not a lot of people on your team quite yet that can, you know, kind of redirect your thoughts or help you make a decision when you're kind of left to your own thoughts, you and whoever you call your higher being, um, it's good to to be in relationship with others who have been there, done that, or navigating it as well, and they want to see you win. So being a board member of Bell, again, that's Black Entrepreneurs, Leaders, and Ner- Learners, um, we're, we have um, monthly, we have mega master mastermind meetings where we pick topics that are important to entrepreneurs. And so I take nuggets away from those opportunities. And But also being on the board member, it gives me an opportunity to give back and to support the organization and also do things that are that are in the um, the junior entrepreneur space. So we've had young people who have come to to our program to with interest of being entrepreneurs when they graduate from college. And so we've done some mentoring and I've had some externs from a nonprofit organization. So I just think being in company with individuals who are like minded, who are going to support you winning um, has definitely been a blessing. Um, I would also say that I even become before becoming an entrepreneur, and I think I said this on one of your on one of your clubhouse sessions a couple of years ago, is that it's important to find, especially for black women, first generation um, college graduates and career entrepreneurs, corporate America career women and entrepreneurs is to seek out mentors or coaches in your particular industry. And even if you don't necessarily know them, um, send them a DM on LinkedIn and say, hey, do you mind if if I if we could have a 30 minute informational meeting and not me coming just with my handout or about what I can take from them, but me just wanting to hear more about who they are at their core. How did you navigate this career? How did you get into Google? What has been some of your challenges? What would you, you know, not me coming asking for a job, but me wanting to hear their story and how they navigated their success has really been helpful. And I think that kind of prepared me for where I am now to, like I said, be in a a board board level position to give back to other young people and individuals who also DM me for informational meetings. And so um, I think those are full circle opportunities. And as it relates to not being just about the money, it kind of goes back to kind of what I said about me wanting to create generational wealth in a way that wasn't just about a side hustle. 
I wanted it to be something that I can be intentional about, that um, was in alignment with my core values. I love that aha moment when someone's in my lesson or they leave a lesson and they're like, I now feel more productive in the workplace. I now have job satisfaction. Or I now just, my my work self-esteem has just skyrocketed because now I know for myself this information that I've been struggling with because of the way in which you create your curriculum. And so I would say picking entrepreneurship, choosing something that is in alignment with work that doesn't always feel like work. And it is going to feel like work, but at the same time, you would do it if you could do it for free, if you had to. That's kind of what I feel about doing the work that I do. So you have lived in the deep South, or at least I'm at Georgia. So we, this is South. We go, not the deep one, but this is South. So you, so you know what's up when I say you're going to make me throw this shoe across the room. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Um, I mean, I'm with it. I, I feel it. And it's legacy. And I have conversations with my friends, especially those who are entrepreneurs all the time, that it's about the legacy and not just a legacy. For me, honestly, entrepreneurship is about the freedom and even the freedom to be able to, you know, have to create a legacy, period, and want to other, to want to empower other people to be able to do the same. So that's where I'm going with this. But definitely appreciate it. Um, so kind of sort of you know pivoting just a little bit um the name of your business is champion instructors education but my question to you at this moment though is what does it even mean to be a champion man so you threw in a monkey wrench with that one i that's that's good and you know just titling my business you know my son who i who i mentioned is is autistic and we're still trying to understand what that means for him Um, And again, my motivation being behind him, his support system, as I as I I called them, uh, trying to navigate getting him the support he needed during a time where he needed he needs support 24 seven, except for when he's sleeping. Even when he's sleep, we watch him on the monitor. Um, His name is Asim and Asim means champion in the African language. And so I was very intentional about naming him because he was my miracle baby. I was an at-risk pregnancy. Um, We had a lot of different challenges. Um, Ladies, make sure you are are paying attention to your reproductive health. But going down a whole lane there, naming him champion, I was very intentional about naming my business champion instructors, education and training. And so I am paying um, respect to him. He is my motivation. I am learning and growing. Um, I am creating more opportunities for patients um, with uh, with his story. And so to be a champion, I would say, would be to face the hard stuff because it has not been easy. Um, some days are easier than others, but but it has not been easy. I would say it means to... Um, be intentional about self-care, be unapologetic about the things that you advocate for. And so where I may have had different focuses on what I focus my activism around, my activism is less in those categories and more for the areas of um, education, access and equity and, and special education. And so being intentional, a champion is being intentional about you know, aligning yourself with things that are really valuable to you and being unapologetic about those things, um, even on the hardest days. Um, And I would also say it means stretching yourself in places where you didn't even know you had the strength to go. You know, um, my son's story is very personal. So obviously, you know, threading his his needs into what I do now as champion instructors, education and training CEO and founder, I am responsible for, for making his name right, you know? And so I feel like I'm doing that again in, uh, intentionally when I create my curriculum and when I am working with an organization or an entrepreneur who says, hey, you know, my name is Eve. I want to create a course around XYZ. Can you put together an e-learning in that way? And me being able to dig deep into the content and all the work that that person has done and and create something amazing for them to have um, another stream of income. I think those are ways that I've been a champion. I don't know why you playing talking about that question was hard. 
<laughs> you nailed it to be. Um, but that was great. And here's the thing. It came from the heart, but not just that. You know your why. And when I read about you and learned about your son's name, I was like, wow. I mean, because I'm everything is in a name. And rather than you going for something and just calling him champion, just naming him champion, because, you know, people have a way of naming their children these days. I don't judge. Do what you want to. But you just could have been champion. You gave it not just that, but an African meaning. And even off of the strength of it being an African name, it's the idea of this, again, ancestral and the power that comes from Africa and it being the first, you know, of the continent since to create the life that's on this earth. There's so much power in that. And I'm just really glad that you did that, but was excited to see how the vision coupled. And even to hear you just say to pay respect to your son. I'm sorry, but I don't know too many parents who want to honor their children in that way because they think more so about honoring people who have gone on before them, but not the people who are coming behind. So let me just give you kudos and flowers and wine or whatever you love for that because I think that's very admirable and I think a lot of people can take from that um, that it's it's about the, you know the, the the future as much as it is about the past and just bringing it all together. So really, really love that. Um, but with all things said, you know, and thinking about champion and speaking up for yourself and advocacy and you just learning how to be a better person. I think about something you mentioned as well as having mentors and mentors have helped me to be a better person. So what is some of the best advice, though, that you have ever gotten from one of your mentors, be it that it's been recent in entrepreneurship or even something from like way back when that's just been like, this is a thing that somebody told me that I think everybody else should know, too. I love that question. Um, one of the things that this young lady who I literally like sent an email to her because she was at the top of her game at this amazing organization here in San Diego, one of the top hospitals here. And she's the she was the VP of human resources. And I said, listen, I, I'd like to to meet with you over lunch. And, and like I said at the beginning, and just kind of figure out, I just want to hear how you made it to where you are. Like I kind of had a little understanding about her resume. And ironically, we had the same master's degree, but we were several zeros behind the comma <laughs> away from each other. And so listen, I, at the same time, I want to make that money too. So, so I, I didn't say that to her, but you know, between us here, I'm like, listen, I, you know, how did you navigate your career? And one thing that she said to me that stuck and it will never leave is she said, when I'm in a room, I only speak about the things that I am a subject matter expert of. She may not have said a subject matter expert of, but she said, you know, while I may know, let's say five things, or I may have a resume of several things that I've done. She's like, I pride myself on being an expert of a couple of things. So when it comes to me needing to speak in a room of stakeholders or executive leaders, they know that when I speak, I know what I'm talking about. I am confident and I can be fact checked. And she was saying, you know, it's important not to just just to want to be heard or to speak, just to speak in a room because you may lose credibility. And while some people may feel like, you know, it, it's hard for Black people to have a voice in the room, um, especially when we're already not even seen, sometimes we can get in the position of just wanting somebody to even notice that we're there. And so I understand that that's been a struggle for, for, for some of us trying to figure out that happy medium. But what I took from her message was, hey, listen, you don't necessarily have to get rid of all the, the things that you're a subject matter expert of, but be a very confident uh, subject matter expert of a couple of things. That way, when people come to you, they know that you are current in that particular field, industry topic, and that you're always going to give subject matter expertise advice about whatever that information is. And I, I think that that is a well-rounded way of having a seat at the table and making sure people know your worth when it's time for you to speak up. And drop the mic. <laughs> so look, I could talk to you on and on and on. Um, you're so easy to talk to, I'll say that. But we're going to have to wrap it up in just a second. So let me follow that question with, so in turn, what is the piece of advice or words of wisdom from you that you want to leave us with? 
Oh my goodness, I don't have my own little thing. I need to just come on now. <laughs> yes, you come on. Dig deep, dig deep. No, you got it. You natural, so I'm going to give you a gun. You natural, you got it. Okay, I need to get my own Kia swag. Um, You know, I think it's okay for me to use hers. And I've adopted, and I'm saying her advice translated by way of how I just said it. Um, Figure out what it is that you do well. And I think that entrepreneurs have even said that to me. Like I told you guys about occupational therapists, speech therapists, K through 16, and adult learning in the workplace. And honestly, when I launched my business, I was trying to do all four. I was like, why not? Walmart sells Christmas trees and they sell Noxzema. Like, what's up? I'm trying to hit everything. And I've had several people in entrepreneurship field say, you know what, Kia, you need to scale down and focus on something. And going back to what that mentor said to me, I think it's important. My piece of advice and words is to figure out what you're great at and and let it be two high level things that you're really good at and be the best at those two things. Like how you're the expert. People know to come to you about first generation college graduates. And I guarantee you, people don't come to you confused asking you what it is that you do because you're very clear about in your message about what your expertise is. And I think that that's definitely been something that I have had to tailor my business. It doesn't mean I can't do it eventually, but in your first infantry years, it's important to just make sure that people know who you are, what it is that you do, and just perfect your craft and your art in those particular areas. And that way people are solid about your brand and they know what it is that you're representing. And you know where it is that you're going. You can make sure that you are um, beta testing, as you said earlier. And and you, you can't test when you have five different subjects flying all over the place. And so I've had to take on that lesson. And that's just something that I would leave others with. You know, your thing might be scaled down, honey, because I heard nobody else say it's scaled down. But there is something to that because how often do we do the I'm trying to scale and we are all over the place. So that that was that was a good piece of advice. If, if you ask me, you ain't asked me, but I'm just going to say it <laughs> <laughs> because and, and I think that's good. But even to think about the idea of scaling may be to simplify So see if that's trademarked, because that might be the thing that you should go ahead and pursue. (laughs) But I love it. Well, look, it has been so um, amazing to have this conversation with you today. So if you can, please tell us where we can find you on the Internet. That'll be great. Absolutely. So on LinkedIn, please look for Kia Edwards, K-I-A Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Um, You'll also see that I am linked um, on my LinkedIn to Champion Instructors Education and Training. And then on Facebook and Instagram, you can find us at Champion Instructors Education and Training. If you want to go ahead and click my profile, if you're listening on um, Clubhouse, you should be able to go right to our Instagram and see some of our content there. And I just thank you all for having me and thank you for listening. And we love you over here at Champion Instructors. We appreciate all that you're doing. Listen, my heart is so full right now. And just thank you for being who you are, for showing up like you do. Um, and I, you know, I think there's this thing like you are truly a soror that I'm so proud to call my soror because of how you show up and you show out. Um, but I love it. But until next time, you be good to thank yourself. Thank you. And we're going to catch you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.